Hi, Stu here. I'm from Dartmoor today with Sam and Hunter, and we're going to look at two new tents we've got in stock from a brand called Nemo. We've got the Dragonfly One Man Osmo and the Dagger Two Osmo. So we're going to get those pitched and we'll talk to you about their fabrics and what they're all about, the difference between, differences between two models and what sets Nemo apart. So I've got them in here. First one we're going to pitch is going to be the dagger, the slightly bigger one. So these are North American freestanding tents, which means basically uh, they pitch inner first. So we're going to put the peg the inner out, put that up with the poles, and then we're going to chuck the fly over. So all I need first, it's pretty windy up here today. So I'm going to do my best to not make sure nothing gets blown away. There's the poles. There's the pegs. They've got some weight to them. There's the inner. So if I make sure I keep my weight on the inner, take the fly sheet, pop that in there. We know that's not going to get blown away now. That's uh, something we're going to talk about in a minute. Pop that all in there. Make sure that's done up. And not going to blow away. That's the last thing you want. Take the bags, pop them in my pocket here. That's the guy lines. So you want to try and pitch these tents with one of the ends into the wind because that's where the, the most of its structure is and once we get the poles up that will be a bit clearer so these are DAC poles and they're a hub design so you recognize it as something similar to what you've seen in like an MSR Hubba Hubba or the Big Agnes Copper Spur tents, Sea to Summit tents. It's a very popular design now. It gives you the best space to weight ratio inside the tent. And these have got nylon feet, which the poles clip into. And then the green cross pole clips into place as well. Clip the inner to the poles. Now we can get the fly sheet. And the, the tabs are colour coded where it clips into place. So I'll make sure that they match. And as it's quite windy, there are Velcro tabs on the inside, which you'll want to attach to the poles to help keep that fly sheet in place. There's a couple of more plastic clips which lock over onto the pole. Pop that one in place, stop it flapping around too much. And we should be able to open this door now to make sure this is in the right place. So that is the Dagger Osmo two-person pitched. 
think what we'll do next is we'll get the one person one pitched first and then we'll talk about the temps. So now we're going to do the same thing with the, uh, the dragonfly. Holes and pegs, inner tent, pop the fly sheet back into my backpack so it's out of the way. The pegs ready in my pocket here. What I'm going to do this time is pop the pole up first. By putting the pole up first, it's ready to go. The downside of tents which pitch inner first is that although they give you loads of space, lots of room inside, it does leave the tent inner exposed to the weather before you're able to get the fly on. So the less time spent with that inner getting wet, the better for potentially getting wet. So I'll put the pole just here for a minute. That's the cross pole. So in an ideal world, the poles would be separate, unpacked out of the tent. You put the poles together, then you get the inner out, peg it out, pop it up, then chuck the fly on. This tent isn't asymmetric. There's a head and a foot end, so it's not symmetric like the dagger. So this tent, we need to make sure the foot end uh, is into the wind and the head end is out of the wind. So if the wind is blowing really hard, um, any compression doesn't happen on the head end of the tent. And it is colour coded. So there's bright green poles, we need to find the bright green end, which is here. And it's going to annoy Sam a little bit because the door is this side. So he's going to, to, he's going to move his camera around. try and keep it off that massive boulder. Don't want guy lines, need more pegs. It's pretty windy up here today. This is just the limit of this style of tent. It's certainly not a summit camping design. We'd be better off pitching it down in the valley out in a more sheltered position but there's not as nice of views down there. And uh, showing you a better idea. Typical UK conditions where it's not as sheltered. So now I've got it pegged down. Let's get the pole. Put that in the green end. So you can see the difference with this one. The hub is not on the centre, or well, that the uh, these are off this, so you get more head height, and it's lower down the other end. So because it's got shorter poles, that's going to help save the weight. These plastic clips are also colour coded, so it tells you what colour to clip the pole clip onto, clip onto which pole. Get the fly sheet. Now I promise you on this side there's a great big door and Sam will bring the camera around in a mode to show you that amazing feature. Okay, so there you have it. Dagger Osmo 2, Dragonfly Osmo 1. And let's talk about some of the features of these tents. Sam will bring the camera in now, we can have a little chat about some of these features, get the dog out of the wind. So what sets the Nemo tents, the Osmo tents, apart from other brands, the main thing is this fabric. This, what they call their Osmo fabric. It's a poly nylon. So it's, it's a nylon and polyester blend. What that means is it holds onto less, a lot less water than what 
a nylon, a straight nylon tent would. If you've used a sill nylon or a, or a nylon tent out before, you find that it goes very saggy when it gets wet. Because this has got polyester in it, that's a lot less likely to happen. On the Dragonfly, which is what we're in now, it's a 1500mm hydrostatic head. And on the Dagger, it's a 2000mm hydrostatic head. So that sounds pretty low, and it is low compared to other, fabric, other tents out there. But you've got to remember it's a, a very high quality fabric and that's going to stay high for a long period of time compared to cheaper fabrics. So silicon coating on the outside and a PU coating on the inside. The reason they PU coat the inside is then you can heat tape the seams. If it's not, uh, if it's silicon coated on the inside they can't heat tape it. So this is a much more watertight way of making the tent. Uh, the floor on these is the same Osmo fabric. So it's a poly nylon um, and it's got a 2000 mil head on both the Dragonfly and the Dagger. Uh, the, both of these are available with footprints, which is going to double that. It's the fabric, the footprint fabric's the same, so you can you can double that um, waterproof rating with the footprint. Inside, there's loads of space in here. This is the one-man tent. There's plenty of room for, for for me and my kit. Lots of head height compared to um, other tents. Plenty of storage options. The entire top of this is what they call a no see and mesh. So um, here upwards is all mesh, which is going to make it very breathable, but not particularly warm. And then this fabric is, is all um, very highly you know, water resistant. The seams aren't taped at the top here, but it means that any wind um, blown in is going to not come straight into where you're lying. So when I'm lying down, my head at this end, it's behind the fabric. So it's going to boost the warmth temperature of the tent. These are two season tents though. So um, they are kind of spring, summer backpacking tents. You're going to be pushing them to their limits in uh, autumn. Uh, win definitely not winter tent. The, there's, there's plenty of storage inside this. And another nice feature is the, you going out? You stay in there, mate. Come on. So there's plenty of storage in these tents. There's pockets all over the place. You get like a funny orange pocket in here for a night light. Um, and then one of the features I quite like is, is, let me just get that out. Come on. You get a vent pole or vent stick. So that is gonna, increase ventilation quite a lot to reduce condensation inside the tent. And that just easily clips out the way. The door also rolls back further so we can open this up if you're in a nice camping area. You can roll it back to here or you can keep going and open up the entire front of the tent. So we can have this completely open. The door closed. So now we can enjoy the views in the summer in Scotland and not be absolutely destroyed by the midge. So I thought what we do now is we go and compare this to the dagger, see the room, how much more space you get in that tent. And we'll go over a few final features. Okay, so another important reason for why you want to orientate this end into the wind is any wind blowing rain blowing up here is going to stay out of your tent, it's low down. And like I said, any compression here is going to compress, if anywhere, onto your foot box rather than onto where your head is. So if sound comes around this way, this end of the tent with this large cutout and that's going to really aid um, airflow through the tent. It's going to help to reduce condensation on the inside. But in really windy conditions, it's more likely to blow any 
the, the gap between here and here is not as much as the other end and any windblown rain is more likely to blow up to the inner and then possibly drip down onto your head. We're talking about pretty extreme wind and rain, which is conditions you're probably not going to be out in this tent in. But uh, if you get caught and the weather is very changeable in the UK, you know, look at what we're stood in now compared to when we first pitched these tents. If you get caught out, it's important to make sure you pitch these in the correct orientation. So now we're in the uh, Dagger 2. Loads of space in this tent, easily room enough for two people. Um, you can probably get two people and a large size large-ish, medium-sized dog in here. I'd be comfortable in here with uh, two of us and this dog curled up. I think this is probably one of the only dogs with an 800 fill power goose down sleeping bag. But uh, yeah, he's pretty spoiled. So another nice unique feature you get with the dagger tents is um, this extra piece of fabric, which um, clips, it's called the landing zone, I've just noticed. Uh, and it's like a pocket you can put in the front here. So I'm going to put this in and show you what it does. It's like a mini footprint. And it is colour coded, so it sh should be easy. Famous last words. Right. Red. Grey, black, and there's a yellow one in the corner here. Hope you're enjoying the view as I put this in. Okay, so now we've got a dry area for us to store some bits and pieces, which is quite nice. That comes with that. You can use it if you want to, or you don't have to use it, but. You know, it's pretty wet up here and we can now, we've got like a dry bathtub area. So if the ground's soaking wet or the wind's gonna blow some rain in, my pack's gonna stay relatively dry. Um, you could put your boots there. I don't know why you wanna put your boots in here because they're gonna be damp on the floor here, but you, you've got a dry storage area, bits and pieces, which is quite a nice feature. Door-wise, um, it's similar, but you get this kind of round opening, which is quite a nice feature. And then both these sides do roll back. So we can loosen off some of that tension. And we can do the same on this side as well. Um, but we've got this footprint in, so we're not, we're not gonna do that. This is a slightly heavier gauge fabric than the Dragonfly. So it's got that high, the higher hydrostatic head of 2000 mil rather than 1500. And because it's symmetrical, you get loads of head height at both, at both ends of this, this tent. And there's, there's loads and loads of space on the inside here. But you've got cordage, you've got, you've got uh, some bits in here you could run a cord through. So I'd probably be tempted to run some cord through here to create a, create a, uh, like a, a drying line by putting bits and pieces in. Um, there's a, a few pockets, so you've got plenty of pockets for storage. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, and two nightlight pockets. So six, Six pockets in all, and it's got the same high um, bathtub on it, which runs around the entire tent, which is gonna stop that uh, wind blowing in and causing you to get too cold or too much of a chill without reducing the amount of mesh. So it's got lots of no see and mesh on here. So again, you, can, you could pitch this without the fly on a really fine evening. Not what we're getting now, Sam's out there pretty much in the grim wind blown rain as we're up on Dartmoor. Um, but if you're going somewhere nice, if you're going like south of France, Spain, somewhere that isn't the UK, be a really nice tent for camping without this on to enjoy the, the views and enjoy the stars without getting destroyed by bugs. So this, this, this is also using this Osmo fabric as we discussed, so it's a poly nylon blend. So having the polyester blend in here means it's got three times less stretch so as i was talking about it getting baggy when it gets wet this three times less than a tent made completely out of nylon and it's four times more water repellent so uh it's not going to wet out as quick but you've also got a dwr coating this is completely pfas free 
and made of 100% recycled fabrics. So it's pretty good as far as kind of environmental credentials made of recycled fabrics and the poles are anodized, they're DAC green anodization, which again is an environmentally anodizing, anodizing um, treatment to the tent. So what we're gonna do now is um, I'm gonna zip myself away and leave Sam out there in the wet. So we're gonna curl up and go to sleep. Isn't that right, doggo? So I hope you've enjoyed watching and uh, check out our full range of Nemo online. And any questions you might have, you can leave them in the comments below and Sam will answer them for you. Thanks again for watching.